Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Now, in my last session, I was somewhat caught between a number of things while I was talking to you, and I kind of blended it all together, which I didn't intend to do. But I am going to say this: This is going when you, when you this is going to deal with your purpose. And when you know your purpose and your assignment, and God has given you that, nothing virtually basically can, can kill you until, excuse me, until the Father's finished. Now, Paul made a statement. He says, I'm now ready to be offered up, and he made his statement. And but Paul was realized where he stood, and he felt his purpose was already accomplished. But I want to read to you something now. I want to tell you a story. Ambassador Paul was a bad man, and I'm saying bad meaning bad. He was a bad man. And what he did was he persecuted the Christians. Now you can, uh, they called them back then, they, 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 they called them, they adapted the name Christianity from Antioch. But I want you to understand this thing. Christian was giving uh, by People, man gave it. And I always say that if a man can name you, uh, they will define you. And that's true. Um, but I want you to understand this. God had already ordained Paul for this assignment for the Gentiles. That was his assignment. And you can go to Matthew, the 10th chapter, in the 5th verse, and read that 5th verse, and he'll tell you. He told the 12 disciples to go, but don't go to the Gentiles or the town of Samaria. Samaritans were Gentiles, were people who were not Jews. So he sent his, the 12 to the Jews, not to the Gentiles. Now you'll find this located in Matthew the 10th chapter in the fifth verse. Now, I want you to turn to also, Acts, the seventh chapter. Now remember, when you have discovered your purpose, God has given you assignment, and your purpose, you stay in line with his will, and you will complete your purpose, being led of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul Better known back then was known as Saul. He persecuted the saints. He even had he, in the, in the time of Stephen, was being stoned. There was a young man by the name of Paul that held their coats as he was being stoned. Now listen, there's many times like happened to me, that in order for many of you, you, you know who I'm talking to, can discover your purpose and get God, God want to get, you, get your attention, he's going to have to sometimes shake you up, allow something to happen and make you think about what's going on in your life. What you may consider a tragedy may happen in your life. And yet it could be all to get your attention because the other methods didn't work. That's what happened to Paul. Once again, Saul, for his name he became Paul. Listen, when the Lord Jesus wanted him, he was ready for him. And listen to what he said. Ninth chapter of Acts. Start with the first verse. Third verse. As he journeyed, 
he came near to Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? That's personal. See, you know, I'm glad he said that because those of us who are kingdom citizens and we're obeying and we're filled with spirit, when you, anyone hurts us or attempt to hurt us, you're messing with the king. The king always protects his citizens. I'm a living witness to that. My wife is a living witness to that. My son's a living witness to that. He will protect you. I don't sweat the small stuff that comes upon me. It's times when I say, Lord, I, I think I'm ready to go, but I, I, I think about my wife. I think about my wife. I think about, Lord, he's not ready for me yet. So I keep on and trust me, the age I am now, I never thought I'd get this age. The life I lived, never thought I'd get this age. But he's good to me. I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing now. By no mean, by no stretch of the imagination. But he's been good to me. He protected me. He watched over me. And, you know, uh, fools and babies have always said that I was a combination of both. But God's been good. Now, I want you to understand something. Saul, Saul kept on persecuting. Now, listen. Let's go on to the fifth verse. And he said, Who are you, Lord? Check this out. Who are you, Lord? He knew there was a power beyond his. Lord. Submission. Listen. Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the groves. In other words, thorns. Thistles. It's hard for you to, 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 to go against that. It's hard for you to go against me. He's going on. He says, so he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? In other words, the Lord has Paul's attention, Saul's attention. He has his attention. You know, sometimes I'm going to tell you something. There's things that God will permit in your life that will stun you, shake you up, so he can get your attention and put you where he wants you to be. Now, he's not going to make you. Look at Jonah. When he has, a, God has a plan for you, for your life and a purpose and an assignment. Don't sweat about anybody hurting you or doing anything. He's a, just be willing. Just submit your will to his will and he will take you through. Nothing can harm you. you, you you're not going nowhere and you shouldn't even sweat about dying. Because see, dying for a kingdom citizen is a promotion. Oh yeah, and my body is, 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 is sometimes it, it, it riddles with pain. And sometimes when I get up, I'm feeling like the champ. And sometimes when I get up, I feel like a defeated foe. But through it all, he takes me through. Paul had a problem too. He, he constantly said, you know, he called it a thorn in his flesh. And he said on several occasions, he asked the Lord to remove it. And then finally the Lord spoke to me and says, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, I can carry it through. Don't worry about that. Don't sweat the, let's see the balance. Don't sweat the small stuff. I will take you through. Just do the purpose and the assignment that I have for you. Now, as we go on, you read in the ninth, ninth verse, the ninth chapter, well, Saul went through many things. He had to go to another man. 
to relieve the blindness, to drop the blindness from his eyes and so his eyes could be opened. God, when God has a plan for your life and has an assignment, no one can hurt you. No one can harm you. You're going to go through stuff. We all do. But you need to be willing. So much social media and so much things caught up and people get caught up in the limelight and the cameras. And forget that. When you're a kingdom citizen, you only have one focus. That's to please the king. When you have your purpose and your assignment, no one can stop you because the king has you at, for that assignment. Nobody can hurt you. Nobody can harm you. Trust me. Saul, in the midst, when he was delivered, when his direction was turned, I want you to understand something here. God didn't take away his energy and his, and, and, and his motivation. None of that. He just changed his direction. That's all he did. Changed his direction. Now, instead of persecuting the saints of God, now he was encouraging them. Now he was strengthening them. And the Lord Jesus, through his power, used that in Saul. You know, there was a, a, a good example of that. Is, um, turn to Acts, 28th chapter and the third verse. Right, man, I'll turn it with you. Third verse. Paul was in Malta, another little city. But listen what happened. When I tell you something, believe it. And one day I'll sit here and tell you things in my life, what God have done. But listen what happened to Paul. 28th chapter of Acts, starting with the first verse. Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives shown, showed us unusual kindness. For they kindled a fire and made, and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper, snake, came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. Fifth verse. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. <laughs> I want you to check this out. When the when the, when the serpent bit them on the hand and slung there, they had concluded, like mankind does, he was a murderer. He did something nasty. Check this out. Fifth verse. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down, dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said he was a god. You see, <laughs> you see, 
Paul had to really, when God got his hands on you, and, and, and he has assigned you a purpose and an assignment, and Paul's assignment was to be an ambassador to the Gentiles, to those who weren't of the Jewish persuasion. Paul was to preach and teach the kingdom message to those people. Understand this. That's why I never sweat the small, small stuff. I, I, I've learned not to. Storms and everything have happened while we over here, and it never touched our place. We saw rivers of water literally coming past it, never touched our place. God is good to us. When you obey his purpose and willing to do his will, he will protect you regardless of what goes on. My wife calls me, still calls me an android. Well, see, it's not that I'm an android. I just trust the Lord. And my saying is this. If I'm worshiping and serving a king all the time in my life, and he's keeping me, and, 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 and he can't keep me in the time of crisis or a time when I, I don't have nothing, why do I need him? I'm here to re tell you today that he's never failed. Never failed. You know, I realized that this old body is going to go. Now, the me inside feel young. It's the body that keeps me back. Because I know I live for that moment and when, when the Lord comes back. That's, this is not a religious saying. This is not a religious segment. His kingdom government, being a citizen, the Lord God, the Lord Jesus protects his citizens. He protects them. I look on YouTube a lot and see so many people homeless in different countries and trying to get into other countries, to get out one country, I thank my king for keeping me. And yet, when I write, I sit at my desk here and write articles, it reaches people all over the world through the website. That gives me to know I'm not important. It's the word that changes the lives of the people. It's the word. It's the word. I'm going to read you something. Turn to Romans 8 chapter. I want you to get this. And the 28th verse. Listen. And we know. Oh, I got I, 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 I to gotta start. I got to go back so you can get the whole, the whole segment of this. Listen. This is my brother Paul. Uh, Paul was a bad man. And I'm saying that for good. Listen. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's us. For the creation was subject to fertility and willingly because, because of him whom subjected in hope, because of the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We can go on now. We're going to skip that part and go to the 28th verse and read. And we know that all things work together for good. Tell it again. Kingdom citizens, living his life, living God's word. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. And some 
translation says to love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. Those who are called according to his purpose. You, God has a purpose for you. He has an assignment. And man, let me tell you something. Whatever you do, it's going to work good. I'm telling you, I cannot express it more. He works it out for your good. It works for your good. Regardless of what the crisis may be, it comes out. Hey, you step in stink stink and you come out smelling like a rose. That's the God I serve. When you live according to his word, when you walk according to his word, when you do what's according to his word and you're willing to submit your will to his will, trust me, you can do the devil may even come and try trouble. You have trouble all around you, but you come out without a stench of fire on you. That's the God that's heard. That's the God if you're a kingdom citizen. That's the God you serve. See, I can talk like this because I'm a witness. I'm a recipient of the goodness of God in my life. My son can verify that. My wife can verify that. And by the way, men, all you brothers there, before I leave you, treat your wife like you treat yourself. Treat them nice. I, when I first met my wife, I'll tell you something. I had the New York style of talking and saying what I had to say, and that was it. No more. The Holy Spirit guided me, and I learned. She taught me. I learned. Until next time, remember this. Your faith in the Word of God is your greatest asset in the kingdom. Until next time. Thank you.